Today I want to talk about um, lithium iron phosphate batteries uh, installed inside of a camper van or RV or any off-grid um, installation where the batteries could be subject to temperatures that are below freezing. Lithium iron phosphate batteries do not like to be charged below freezing and can actually be irreversibly damaged if you do so. So what I'm looking for is a way to disconnect um, my solar panels from charging the batteries when the temperature is below freezing. Uh, currently my battery management system on my lithium batteries uh, doesn't have any provisions for addressing this so I'm kind of coming up with a do-it-yourself solution. Um, I'm going to be using a couple of components. Um, the first one is a digital thermostat. Um, these are available uh, online. Uh, you can pick them up on eBay or Amazon. Um, the model I'm using is a Inkbird ITC1000, um, and specifically this model is the ITC1000F, um, and it is the 12 volt model. Uh, the F stands for Fahrenheit. The device can be programmed in either Celsius or Fahrenheit. If you were to purchase just the standard uh, 1000, it is only Celsius. So if you're in the United States or anywhere that you want to be able to display the temperature in Fahrenheit, make sure you buy the 1000F. Um, what this device does is um, basically will power um, two different circuits um, and based off of temperatures, whether it wants to heat or cool. Um, this device is particularly helpful for my application because it is a 12 volt model, so it can be powered off of my house power. Um, and it does have an external temperature sensor, which is very useful if you would like to install this somewhere where you have, let's say, uh, your other control panels or monitors. Um, you could run the temperature probe and have that installed directly on the battery, um, which is nice. So this device can actually um, control up to 10 amps, but with my installation, I have about 300 watts of solar on the roof and uh, I'll be pushing on a sunny day more than 10 amps. So I don't wanna actually push my solar through uh, these internal relays plus the really small connectors anyway. So with my installation, what I'm actually gonna be using is to power on a uh, external relay. And the external relay I'm gonna be using is an EV200. Um, these are pretty common. Um, my battery management system actually uses the exact same relay. Um, it can handle up to 500 amps, which is overkill for my current installation, but uh, in the future, if I ever wanna hook up any other high current charging sources, uh, let's say a second alternator for the van or um, a dedicated shore power charger, um, that could go through uh, this device here. So the way that it's gonna work is the ITC1000 um, can either turn on or turn off a circuit. And we're gonna be using the cooling circuit because we wanna power this device when it is above, uh, let's say 35 degrees. So I drew up a quick um, drawing. So this is the basic wiring diagram that I drew up. Uh, it doesn't include anything um, like fuses or inline switches or anything else, just a, a basic how to wire up the thermostat that I, I, I plan on doing. Um, I already have an existing DC panel, so I'm going to be wiring into a fused connection on that panel. Uh, I only have two open slots left on that panel, so if I wanted to install anything else, um, I would only have, um, I wouldn't have any free spots left, so what I plan on doing is uh, jumping the connection and powering the thermostat and the external relay through um, one connection on the panel. So uh, basically what we've got here is um, just my positive and negative coming in to power uh, the relay. Um, the temperature probe, like I said before, is an external probe. So it's nice that I can run that directly to the battery and have a, a, an accurate temperature at the battery. Um, the internal relay for heat, we're not going to be using. Um, we are going to be using, however, the cooling relay. And the reason it's going to be cooling is the relay will close when 
it is above a certain temperature. So the device is thinking that it's gonna cool something like we're on a fan or a compressor or something along those lines. But what we're gonna be doing is just making sure that when it's above a certain temperature, we want to enable charging. So it's gonna power our external relay. So uh, in a normal condition, if it's above 35 degrees, this internal relay will be shut making a, or closed, making a connection and um, powering or energizing the coil in this external relay and making a connection between these two, allowing the current from the solar panel to go to the charge controller. Now I have it labeled MPPT. However, if you have a PWM controller, it's the same idea. And then from there, the current will flow and charge the batteries. Now let's say we are uh, below 35 degrees um, what's going to happen is the temperature probe is going to read the temp. It's going to be below 35 degrees. It's going to send a signal over to its internal relay to open, therefore disconnecting power between um, these two posts, internal posts, and cutting off current to this external relay, which will then de-energize the internal coil and separate these two posts, therefore effectively cutting off or turning off charge from the solar panels to the charge controller and therefore the batteries won't be charged below freezing. Um, so uh, let's go outside and take a look on how it's wired up. All right well we have things temporarily installed. I didn't want to get everything permanently mounted until I knew everything works plus um, it's not wired uh, exactly how I'm going to have it permanently set up but I just wanted to uh, wrap up this video and uh, test everything and make sure that it works. But the way it's sitting now is the uh, solar panels go into the charge controller and then out of the charge controller, it's going into the relay and then out of the relay, it's getting connected to the batteries through my battery management system. Um, so when the relay is triggered to um, open, it's gonna disconnect the um, charge controller from the batteries. Uh, in my permanent installation, I'm going to install the relay before the charge controller, and I'll explain that in uh, just a minute. But um, the relay is getting power from the thermostat, and the thermostat is wired to my um, AC-DC panel. I've got a Progressive Dynamics PD-5000, so it's fused. Um, and again, this is just a temporary setup. Things are just laying around. But um, to show you how it's working, um, we're getting power to the charge controller, and to the charge controller remote. And the reason why uh, I'm going to be installing the uh, relay before the charge controller is I need to maintain power to the charge controller and the remote because I actually use this for my battery monitor. If you actually install a shunt and wire it to the remote, you can actually get a state of charge for your battery. And with lithium iron phosphate batteries, uh, as you know, they have a very flat discharge curve. So you can't determine the uh, state of charge based off of voltage because with such a flat discharge curve, you're basically at 13.2 volts until the battery's dead and then the voltage quickly drops off. So um, it's important to have an accurate meter to know your state of charge amps in and out, uh, which this device does. And uh, when it's powered off, it loses its state of charge percentage. So you does, it doesn't really know um, where it sits until you actually get a full charge and then it marks it at 100 and then you go from there. So that's why it will get installed before the charge controller. So uh, to demonstrate it working, it's getting pretty cold in here so it might actually do it on its own. But as a test, I've got a bowl of snow because we got some snow last night. And I'm just gonna put the probe inside the snow to drop the temperature. And we'll see the relay open and the solar get disconnected. The relay was just open because it hit 35 degrees. Now the charge controller does say load because it's trying to power the solar um, controller and remote from the solar. However, they're covered in snow at the moment, so there's not going to be enough to actually power it for long. And as you see, it just shut off. And my remote just shut off as well. So um, 
Now what we want to do is simulate bringing it above freezing so it can continue charging. So we'll just take the temperature probe and I'm just going to hold it in my hand and it should warm up relatively quickly. The relay just closed, therefore connecting the charge controller to the battery. And we should have momentarily, yep, charge controller is now powered on. And our remote panel is powered back on. But as I said before, the battery capacity uh, gauge uh, is not calibrated because we haven't gotten a full charge. So, like I said, I'm going to be installing it um, before the charge controller so we can maintain power to the, to the controller um, even in below freezing conditions. I'm going to uh, get this permanently installed and I'll probably do a, a future video um, going over the entire electrical system in the van. Um, but for now, if you have any questions, feel free to leave any of them in the comments. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and thanks for watching.